Hello, hello, everyone, and welcome to today's show with SportsbookReview.com. I'm your host, Lee Martin, here to talk some UFC. Joining me today, I have SBR's UFC expert, David Mannion, and MMA Mania's lead host, Matt Ryan. Now, before we get into this upcoming weekend's fight main card breakdown, just go ahead, give this video a like, and subscribe to our channel. That way you never miss a show with us. Now, let's jump into it. I hope you guys are having a wonderful week so far. Before we get into this upcoming weekend with Figueroa versus Alex Perez, let's just rewind a little bit and just check out what happened this past weekend with Paul Felder and Rafael Dos Anjos. Dave, I'm going to start with you. How are you doing today? And let me know how your weekend and Hello guys, um, we're back again, uh, this time I've got a pay-per-view event, uh, weekend went great, I mean, do you know what, since this pandemic has hit, my results have been great, and I've barely, when it comes to my, I do a, a, I give a prediction for every fight on Twitter, okay, since I started doing this in June, I haven't had a losing week, it's always been uh, in the positive, so it's, all, it's been great uh, of recent. Um, last week, the shocker for me was obviously uh, Kalen Williams. God damn. Yeah. Um, what a knockout that was. Super impressed by that dude. Um, I won't be feigned at him again. <laughs> um, and then the main event, uh, t to be fair, was exactly what I expected. We all love Paul Farrell now, but I just knew that RDA was a step ahead. And um, congrats to everyone who cashed. Yeah, and how about you, Matt? How are you doing? And let me know how your weekend went. How am I doing? Well, I'll just take a look and, you know, mark, gaze and, and wonder. Uh, <clears throat> well, yeah, in regards to the RDA Felder fight, that was exactly what, you know, we talked about last week. Like, I wanted Paul Felder to win the mind. The mind said RDA, the heart said Felder. And the deeper this fight went, RDA proved that he was on, you know, two weeks' notice. You know, we've been sad all week. Olive's been crying about it. She's a huge Paul Felder fan. So it's been it's been a, a week of mourning and some, you know, reconciliation in the Ryan household. But, you know, 255 this week, and we've got two title fights and a card that confuses the hell out of me. So <laughs> let's get to it. I think it's a great car that we're getting into this weekend. So, yes, we have UFC 255, Davison Figueroa versus Alex Perez. Versus, it's on this Saturday, November. I wanted to say August for some reason, but it's November 21st. Yes, we're in November. But let's just get into our entire main card breakdown, all right? We have light heavyweight Mauricio Shogun Rua versus Bear Jew Paul Craig. Via Bet Online, Paul Craig is minus 175 and Mauricio Rue is plus 150. Dave, I'm going to start with you if you can give us your breakdown and pick for that fight. Yeah, hide your kids and hide your wife because the Scottish hit squad's back, boy. Um, Paul Badju Craig, or Craig if you're American, I know you guys pronounce it differently. <laughs> um, this is a rematch. We've already saw this fight play out. Uh, first time around, we were gifted with a lovely draw. Um, and they're running it back. Um, who needs McGregor Poirier, hey, when you've got Badger and Shogun 2 coming up? Um, Paul Craig, he is a jiu-jitsu-based fighter, um, primarily anyway. That's, that's what he is. That's his thing. Um, he loves to welcome the fight into his guard, as we saw in the previous fight, which realistically let him down and, and cost him that fight, in my opinion. Um, this guy loves an armbar or a triangle. <laughs> um, and as mentioned, yeah, his bottom guard is just, it's real dangerous. And um, we witnessed that in the anti Gulov scrap as well, getting beat for the entire fight. 10 seconds remain, triangle locked and you're tapping. Um, he's good. He is good on the ground, but the problem is that's all he has. Plus 255 underdog in the first fight versus Rua in Sao Paulo. It was in Brazil, maybe... That fight would have gone differently if it wasn't in Brazil. Maybe it would have been handed to Craig. Maybe. I don't know. Um, speaking about the Shogun fight, he wins the first round. Looks incredible. Paul Craig comes out, looks incredible in that first round. He gets dominated in the second um, because he refuses to get off his back. And then he t completely gives up the third round by doing the same thing. He shoots for this takedown, right? And then it's like he just falls to his back straight into bottom guard again and he's just content in being there. Now, this is what he needs to work around in this second fight. He was punching up Shogun. Shogun definitely, in his prime, <laughs> would have knocked the hell out of Paul Craig. But this is not this is not the Shogun we know and love. This is an older age and war down Shogun who has looked rocky. Even though he is not getting knocked out in all of his fights, he's looking rocky, and that chin doesn't look stable. It didn't look stable in, in their previous fight, and it certainly didn't look stable against um, Little Nog, 
uh, Nogueira in Shogun's previous fight. The damage that he took dur during that first fight is a concern to me. And between the two fighters, um, who do we think is going to gain more skills since the first fight? It's not going to be Shogun. Shogun's, you know, he is who he is. He's, he's not going to evolve. He's not going to come out and start doing spinning back kicks or anything like that. Um, but yeah, it, it, this is a tough fight to predict. I'm not going to lie. I'm, I wouldn't run to the bookies with your money. Um, but Rue is a legend and... Uh, I just don't think he's one of them legends that's going to continue reeling out loads of wins towards the end of his career. I've heard talks of retirement, so there's a good chance this could be his last fight. I think the question you have to ask yourself with this one is, can can Shogun survive uh, without getting and tapped or knocked out? I mean, Paul Craig is not a knockout artist, but I think he could knock Shogun out just based on that performance against Nogueira. The, the, the decline is happening. It's not fast. It's a slow decline, but it's happening. And um, I don't want to be on, on the wrong side when that happens. I believe Paul Craig's going to win this weekend. How? I'm not sure. I feel like he could knock him out in the first round, or I feel like he could tap him out in the third. People talk about Shogun and his Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Um, and if we quote what Michael Bisping has spoken about, how he's incredible, that's that's not true. When you look at Shogun on the ground, he looks like an offensive wrestler. He doesn't look like a, a jiu-jitsu practitioner at all. It looks like he's never even rolled in jiu-jitsu, to be quite honest. He looks like a, a heavy base ground and pound wrestler when he takes the fight to the ground. Although he, he did avoid all submissions from Craig in the first fight, I'm just not sure he's going to be able to do the same here. Um, if Craig can maybe only give up one round to attempt the submission, I'll be happy with that. Um, and use them over two rounds to strike, because Paul Craig, he, he, he could have outstruck Shogun in that third round, decided to take it to the floor. That's what cost him the fight. I think he's a smart dude. He can pick up on them mistakes, and I'm going to go with Paul Craig this weekend. Yeah, I'm with you with Paul Craig. But how about you, Matt? Do you agree with Dave, or do you have a different take for that fight? Uh so here's here are the intangibles for this fight when you look at the numbers. Some interesting things that Paul Craig and Shogun Hua have. They're both two one and one in their last four fights. Uh, the only loss in the run for Hua was the loss and loss to Anthony Smith. For Craig, it was a loss to Alonzo Menafield. So it different types of competitors there that they took their loss on this most recent run. Uh, as Dave said, you know, uh, Hua had an interesting split decision win over little nog it was a interesting how who got out of that fight at all and then this is this is the only fight the fight with Hua was the only time paul craig went to a decision it's the only time in his career he went to the scorecard so that's a big sign for Hua being able yes again it was in sao paulo so there's a lot of different hometown biases but here's my big staff for this fight Paul Craig, since joining the UFC in 2016, has not had a multiple fight winning streak. That is interesting. He's coming off of a win uh, against uh, off back at Whitaker until a few months ago. But I am going to go with Paul Craig here. I think that, you know, you look at all the intangibles, you look at all those outliers, like, oh, he's never had a winning streak. They both have similar records. Who has obviously faced stiffer competition? He's freaking Shogun Hua, for God's sake. But when you're looking at this fight and you're looking at, if you have to look at them in a vacuum, Paul Craig sh probably should have won the first fight. It's probably going to be a better fighter, a fresher fighter than he was in the Hua fight. And also Shogun's aging. How has the COVID-19 of it all played into his training, the traveling to America back and forth and all this other stuff? Those are the questions that I have. And for me, when it all susses out, I'm not running to the bookies either. As Dave said, um, this is kind of a way too close for comfort fight for me. But if I had to parlay it or pick a fighter, I would go with Paul Craig here. And I would probably go third round submission or TKO. All right. Well, if you guys do want to get in on this fight again via bet online, Paul Craig is minus 175 and Mauricio Rua is plus 150. Now let's move on to the next fight. We have women's flyweight Caitlin Chikagan and Cynthia Calvillo. Via bet online, Calvillo is minus 260 and Chikagan is plus 220. Matt, I'm going to continue with you if you can give us your breakdown and pick for that fight. Well, this is Chikagan's fifth fight in the last 12 months. From November of 2019 to now, she has fought four times. She has gone 2-2 two and two in that run. Her last win was back in May against Antonina Shevchenko, who's on the prelims for this card. Uh, and Chukagian, in her last appearance, got washed a month ago. Let's remember, that was a month ago mm -hmm. where she got decimated by Jessica Andrade. 
And, you know, Chukagian in between these two fighters is the more known fighter than Cynthia Calvillo. But Calvillo has not lost since 2017, and that was against a tough competitor in Carla Esparza. In that time, she's been 3-1 and 1 in her last five fights. She had a draw against Marina Rodriguez, and her last win was back in June against Jessica I. Chukagian may be closer to fighting shape because she's been staying training. She took this fight. You know, there's a month in between fights, so Chukagian's got guts and gumption. I'm not going to take that away from her. But Calvillo's going to be the one who's been rested, who's been able to prepare properly for this fight. For me, Calvillo gets the win. I think this is probably going to go the distance, but I think Calvillo wins, and it's probably going to be by a unanimous decision. All right. Well, how about you, Dave? Do you agree with Matt, or do you, do you think that Calvillo can get in a sub against Chukagian? That's the real question. I think she can get a sub. I mean, it is tough. Um, damn, can, I mean, I don't, I don't think so. I, I think we're going to see a decision here. Um, it's Calvio giving up five inches in height, four inches in reach. Not going to matter. Calvio's wrestling is going to come through in this one. I, I think anyway, five and one in the straw division. Calvio has been a bit of a gym hopper, which in my opinion is great for progression in your fight game from team alpha male uh, american kickboxing academy now a team alpha male she would have been you know honing them them wrestling skills and aka fixed up that strike and now she's at extreme couture um she's an awesome pressure fighter offensive wrestler as mentioned more than likely she's going to take her chances with her bread and butter in this fight it's going to be wrestling she was dominating the 115 division bar a loss from you know the former champion in carla Spars. i'm no shame on that one um, and right now she's six and one, and she she came in the UFC with just three professional fights, and she's basically, you know, she's she's growing up uh, in the UFC, not so much in age, but you know her, her MMA professional career. She's she's building that inside the UFC. No better place to do that. Um, and she decided to move up a weight class. I'm I'm not completely sure why. Um, she took a draw, which was fair, I guess, against Marina Rodriguez, because Marina Rodriguez, we know how good her striking is, dangerous Muay Thai striker. And then in her most recent bout, an impressive win over Jessica I. And if we're going with MMA math, Chikagan, Chikagan lost to, to Jessica I. So you, you could you could look at it that way. Um, Chikagan, she's a tough girl. And, you know, as you guys mentioned, she don't stop fighting. <laughs> um, a quick turnaround from a knockout just a couple of weeks ago now, it's not your average knockout because it was it was a body shot. So, you know, it, she'll be fine. Um, you know, some bruising isn't. It's not the same as getting knocked out uh, with a shot to your dome. Uh, Chikagan, she's she has used some grappling. It was was it Anton? Yeah, Shevchenko when she fought the the older Shevchenko sister, the less talented one. Um, she used some grappling that was a surprise because she's usually an output striker Chikagan she likes to bounce around throw loads, loads of jabs loads of hooks loads of strikes mixture of strikes she actually reminds me of Holly Holm um, where she's not you know she's not throwing to kill but she's she's throwing a high output to, to build up them points and um, win rounds and Chikagan can win rounds I, I will give her that um, that high volume stick and move um, a, approach is is going to be a game plan, I believe. I don't think she's going to turn to any type of grappling against Calvillo. Calvillo. Um, but with that said, I don't think she's going to have a choice. I think Calvillo is going to rush her with that wrestling, uh, be on her uh, on the ground, and and take the judges' nod. Uh, so for me, yeah, it's going to be Cynthia Calvillo by decision. Oh, I do want to add though, um, the odds. Oh, I just. They're not viable, really. We're looking at a 72% implied probability on Cynthia Calvi. I can't do that. I, I just So it's going to have to be a parlay, please, or straight up take Calvio by decision. Um, but yeah, t that minus 260 is a, it is a bit steep because, look, she's Kagan. She, she ain't no slouch, and, and she could steal this one. Don't get me wrong. Um, I'm just favoring the, the strong grappler in this one. All right, well, if guys do want to get in on that fight again via Ben Online, Calvillo is minus 260, and Caitlin Chikagan is plus 220. Let's move on to the next fight. We have Walter Waite, Mike Perry and versus Tim Means. Via Ben Online, Mike Perry is minus 140, and Tim Means is plus 120. Dave, I'm going to continue with you for your breakdown and pick for that fight. I mean, the Dirty Bird versus Mike Perry. This is, um, this is an interesting fight. You've got the veteran in Tim Means. He is three and two in his last five fights. And when I look at his last five fights, 
I I take a look at his losses, not his last five. Sorry, I take a look at his key losses during his, uh, you know, of recent recent times, and it's been Rodriguez, Daniel Rodriguez, and Nico Price. Um, and I think Mike Perry can fall into that category where he's the younger, speedier striker. Look, the Dirty Bird is 36 years old. He's getting on a bit. But it's not like we're actively seeing him fade. He's, a, he's an incredible technical striker. And I think that's where I favour him over Mike Perry. I think Perry's got the aggression. Perry's got that, uh, you know, that knockout power. And just that, oh, I don't care. I'm going to come forward and swing mentality. Whereas Tim Means is, is a technical fighter, a technical striker. And he's good on the ground as well. And look, in his last fight against Staropoli... Everyone expected Tim Mean. Well, most people expected Tim Means to lose that fight, and he surprised us all, you know. So, um, this is another one where I don't want to run to the bookie to bet it, but at the same time, I just think Mike Perry. This is stylistically, this fight can suit him. Um, across the fifteen, I think he's going to have the better cardio, um, and he's always entertaining. He's a lunatic. He's wild. He's careless. He's a bit strange, and look, he's going through some things on. on outside of the octagon the you know questionable lifestyle but you know he comes in and and he makes mickey gall looks like what mickey gall is and that's someone that shouldn't be competing in the ufc uh dirty bird is no old timer seven years older than perry but i i just it's hard to fade him means but i want to pick perry because i believe deep down that he can catch him with a knockout and I think that's key. I think he's going to catch him with the knockout. And I think that's what's going to end this fight. But if this goes across the full 15, um, I'm, I'm, Dirty Boy is such a vet. And, and you know, dissimilar, to, n- not the same as Rui. He's is, is, is still there, right? He's still got the speed. He's still got his wits about him. I, I feel like the bird's got a few more wins in his back pocket. Um, I just don't think he can get it over Mike Perry. So I'm going to, hesitantly, I'm going to side with Mike Perry, but um, I, I, I think I need to just look at this fight more. I can't watch enough fight tape on these two and, and just just keep getting confused. It's, it's a hard one to predict, but I will side slightly with, with Mike Perry taking this one. Well, how about you, Matt? What's your take for this fight? Well, let's take a look. Inside the distance, Mike Perry is 11-2 and two as a pro. Once you get into the scorecard territory, once you make a decision, he's three and four. So as Dave said, the deeper you go into this fight, it's more advantageous for Tim Means, who's three and two in his last five. In comparison to Mike Perry in his last three fights, he's gone one and two. Uh, I wouldn't be as brusque towards Mickey Gall as Dave would, in, uh, mainly because I live in the North Jersey area and I really don't want to get my, I don't want all of the blood to be removed from my body. But uh, we've got a, a more veteran fighter who's going up against someone who is, as in my notes, a legit crazy person inside the octagon. Mike Perry, you, last time he had one corner person and it was his girlfriend. And we know all about the stuff that happened back in July. Uh, that, you know, if you want to do that, head to MMA Mania and read about that there. Uh, but the, that telling to me is that inside three rounds, he's 11-2. But once you get to the scorecards, this is a this is a toss up. This is a better fight for Tim Means, who has won six fights by decision. Perry's going to come out strong. He's going to try to set up set up for the finish. Try to play the first two rounds and pressure Tim Means. But Tim Means has knocked out nineteen guys, and Mike Perry's been dropped before. You know, once he was knocked out once in his career, but he's susceptible. The deeper this fight goes, I think it's better for Tim Means. This is another, you know, a fight that I'm backing away from. There's no real guarantees here. This is not something that would make me a lot of money. But if I'm looking at this fight pragmatically, and if it goes the full 15, it's Tim Means' fight to lose. All right. Well, if you guys want to get in on that fight again via Bet Online, Mike Perry is minus 140 and Tim Means is plus 120. Now we're going to get into our title fights. All right. First up, we have women's flyweight title. We have Valentina Shevchenko versus Jennifer Maya via Bet Online. Shevchenko is minus 1,700 and Maya is plus 1,000. Just literally two days ago, Shevchenko was minus 1,500, but now she's minus 1,700. But, man, I'm going to continue with you for your breakdown and pick for this fight. How can you even – like, that says 
says it all right there. <laughs> How did like, this is the co-main event of this card, and the, Jennifer Maya? No knock on her. She got this fight because she's the next woman up. She's three and two in her last five, but both losses to common opponents to Shevchenko. The both of her last five, her last two losses were against Chukagian and Liz Carmouche. She's had five years between stoppage wins. 2015, she beat someone by the name of Marta Souza by TKO. And then in 2020, she got an armbar over Joanne Calderwood. So within half a decade, all of her fights, all of her wins came by way of decision. And also, Maya missed weight in two of her last three fights. And she was one and one in those fights. And we're about 90 minutes or so away from the weigh-ins. Or they're going on now. You never even know what these UFC weigh-ins anymore. She's been knocked out and submitted once, and four of her losses have come by way of decision. She is nine and four the deeper this goes, but this is a five-round fight. This is different territory. This is Shevchenko territory. Shevchenko has not lost to, a, to anybody since Amanda Nunes in 2017, and really only losing to Amanda Nunes and two other people is a pretty impressive record. Uh, mm-hmm. She's on a five-fight winning streak since then, beating Caitlin Chukagi, Liz Carmouche, Jessica I, Joanna Yin Jacek. And then Priscilla Cachoeira back in UFC Bellum. This is her fourth defense of the flyweight title. I can list her stats all day, but Valentina Shevchenko in the women's flyweight division is untouchable. When we talked about Demetrius Johnson when he was champion, when we talk about John Jones when he was light heavyweight champion, you really don't see many great challengers. Women's MMA is still evolving. And I think at the flyweight division, especially in the UFC, Shevchenko is going to walk in there continuously and dominate. It's not the Ronda Rousey era anymore. There's so much great depth in women's MMA, but I really don't think this is going to be a home moment on Saturday night. I think Shevchenko is going to walk in, defend her title, and then go about her business. All right. Well, how about you, Dave? First of all, what do you? How do you think about those odds? First of all, minus seventeen hundred for Shevchenko and Maya, plus one thousand. Dave. Yeah, that's like a ninety-five percent implied yeah. probability. That's crazy. That's insane. Like, but it just goes to show how this fight's going to turn out. I don't need to break this fight down. Matt doesn't need to break this fight. We don't need to talk about this fight at all. We know what's going to happen. Um, maybe we should just make a case for Maya if we can. What can she do? How could she beat Shevchenko? Um, if you look at Shevchenko's weaknesses, it's really hard. Even when you go and look at her losses against the pound for pound go in Nunes, um, maybe grappling um, is where she failed in that fight. But I just don't think Jennifer Meyer's got. Is just there's just right. There's this level, okay, where we're here, and then there's this level where you're way up here. And Jennifer Moya got this title fight by default. She defeated Joanne Calderwood, who didn't have to take this fight. I just want to remind everyone that we could be watching <laughs> Shevchenko versus Joanne Calderwood right now. But instead, Calderwood, you know, she couldn't sit still. She took the fight with Jennifer Meyer. It cost her, cost her her, her title shot. Um, and now we've got a girl who has been defeated by two people that Shevchenko has destroyed. Okay, Liz Carmouche. She beat Liz Carmouche. She avenged that loss back in 2009 or whenever it was. And then she beat Caitlin Shukagian um, by TKO this year. And then look what happened to... <laughs> Uh, Jennifer Meyer when she fought Caitlin Chikagan she lost by decision when she fought uh, Liz Carmouche she lost by decision Um, I'm not one for MMA math but if you just look at the odds you look at the skill set of Shevchenko this is her fight there's no other way to go Um, your main focus this weekend when looking at this fight is just to try and find some value and Valentina to win inside the distance was minus 170 earlier this week. I'm not sure what it's at now, but if you didn't get a piece of that, well, you know, you're not listening to me. Um, look, Shevchenko is going to beat her. And do you know what I wouldn't want to be? I wouldn't want to be Jennifer Meyer, who has never fought a southpaw in a career, to test myself against a southpaw for the first time against a bullet. Not a chance. We saw what she did with that left kick. We, we know what she can do. She's got power in them kicks. And I've got a, there's a funny, I've got a funny feeling she could she could get herself another um, a kick TKO, either to the body, to the head. Um, if not, I, 
Look, Jennifer Myers a black belt, right? And, and she's she has won a fair few fights by utilizing her jiu-jitsu skills. She's got six or seven submissions, right? Um, during a professional career, but this is the bullet, and the bullet has never been tapped for good reason. Valentina, she doesn't even promote herself as a BJJ black belt, but I know I know full well she is at that level. The girl's a master of sports in every freaking martial art there is. Taekwondo, judo, Muay Thai, boxing, kickboxing. She's the flyweight damn champ, and the only people she, she has suffered losses to, one of them she avenged because it was a very long time ago, and I believe she only lost because of a cut or something, so it weren't, you know... A, a legitimate loss and then obviously amanda nunez how can you slay anyone for losing to amanda nunez and you know it's not like amanda beat the crap out of her that's i want to see that run back again um jennifer myers just she's the lamb to the slaughter this weekend uh you you guys have just got to try and figure out how she's gonna do it i personally think she's gonna finish it inside the distance and that's that's the only bit of value you're going to get. Shevchenko is not even worth adding to your accumulators, your parlays, any of that stuff, because it's just not doing anything. A 95% implied probability is basically just saying she's going to win free money. There you go. Obviously, we've seen, you know, historically, the shock, the shock um, wins can happen. And Moya could, you know, you never know, grab a neck or something. It's just highly unlikely so yeah it's all the bullet this weekend and i don't need to tell you guys that you already know yeah. all right if you guys do want to get in this fight again via bet online shevchenko is minus 1700 and jennifer maya is plus 1000 now let's move on to the flyweight title we have davison figueredo versus alex perez via bet online figueredo is minus 270 and perez is plus 230 dave i'm going to continue with you for your breakdown and pick for that fight yeah, so I do the first look article for Sports Book Review and I cover the main event, you know, a, a week in advance. And, and when I did this article, I was I was all over Figgy. And I, and I, I still do think Figueredo is going to take the W, but Alex Perez, is, he's been damn impressive since his debut. And this kid comes from Dana White Contender Series and he's, he's actually going to be the first guy from Dana White Contender Series who's going to get his title shot. Um, he steamrolls near enough every opponent, <clears throat> which is ultra impressive, especially at this weight class. Similar to Figgy in himself, where a lot of finishes are happening, but you know, flyweights, that's that's it's a bit more rare. That they're not heavyweight, it's not 250 pounders. So it is good to see, you know, these these killers come through. I am a bit upset because I did want to see No Love, you know, fight Figgy. I think that fight would have been absolutely incredible. But Alex Perez as a replacement, I'm I'm not complaining. I'm not gonna lie, I, I love this fight. Uh, Perez is deserving, and this matchup works out perfectly. This 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 could be the main event, which also takes fight of the night, and could take all the awards. Um, Perez, what's he good at? Um, he's a wrestler, but I tell you what, them leg kicks <clears throat> that he handed to Juicy A for Miga, I think <clears throat> Figueredo needs to be very hesitant of them leg kicks because if he takes away the leg. Figgy's going to lose his power. And I think that's what's going to win Figgy this fight, is power, which wins in most of the fights, okay? Um, Perez is wrestling. I'm not sure that he's going to want to use it too much because of how good Figueredo is at scrambling, transitioning, and his jiu-jitsu is always, always attacking, whether it be from the back on top, necks, chokes, and he's got a dangerous guillotine too. So if, if Perez wants to shoot, he's going to have to be careful of that neck. And... Um, yeah, so they've got that. Actually, they've got common opponents here that they've both lost to. So Figgy obviously beat Joey B, Joseph Benavidez twice, took the title the second time because of a missed weight cut the first time, and then Alex Perez, his only loss in the UFC is to um, the same guy and Joseph Benavidez. But then we've got Juicier Formiga, who has now been released by the UFC, is the only guy to defeat Figueredo. Okay, now <clears throat> Perez beat him, so. You know, if you're trying to look for MMA math this one, you, you're going to get confused um, because you can't do it this time. One guy's beat one guy and the other guy's beat the other and vice versa. Now, Figueredo, first of all, his power is scary for the flyweight division. He shouldn't be allowed to fight in this division. He's got a big frame. He's wide, incredibly explosive. Um, he's just a big boy uh, at, at this weight class. Um, now, he has been known to have a rough weight cut. We all know this. And across 25 minutes 
Um, I don't know if his cardio will match Alex Perez. Alex Perez is a wrestler. They are used to that grinding style. The longer it goes for a wrestler, usually the better. Now, with that said, his scrambling ability is incredible and his wrestling defense has been solid. Exactly what he's going to need against the heavy grappling-based Perez. Defeating Joseph Benavidez in the fashion he did two times for me was the single most impressive thing out of this division. No one does that to Joey B. No one's done that since Mighty Mouse. And Demetrius Johnson is the greatest flyweight of all time. So to come in and then see another guy do that to Joey B after he's been dominant for so many years it, it is truly a testament to Figueredo's skill. I, I really do rate Figueredo. I hope he can keep this this weight, these weight issues in check. Now that he's a champion, I've got a feeling, you know, he's going to be more prideful, maybe focus on that weight a bit more. Um, but yeah, that Joey B, I just hold that them fights with Joey B in high regard. Um, he is not scared of the wrestling, which is obviously key in this fight. His transitions and his ground movement, submission threats, they're always present. Um, his frame and stature is just huge for the division. As I said, he shouldn't even be competing with the flyweights. Joey B didn't even look like a UFC competitor the way that Figgy dismantled him. Mm -hmm. And to me, that type of performance can't be ignored. And, and that's probably why I was leaning with him when I did my first look, really, because it's just... Them performances are really impressive, man. He, he pressured Joey on the feet. So whichever, wherever Joey was moving, Figgy was circling, just waiting to land them nasty shots. Um, yeah, and I can't ignore that. So them bricks for fists, I feel like they could catch Perez this weekend. And, and I think we might see a, a Figgy knockout or potentially a guillotine if Perez shoots too much. Perez shoots too much, can get himself, can get that net caught, get himself choked. Um, but with all that said, this is not me. Hey, I, I respect Alex Perez too, and um, he's a tough, he's a tough fight. This ain't no easy fight for Figueredo. I'm just siding with the the bigger, stronger, more powerful fighter in this one. All right. Well, how about you, Matt? Do you agree with Dave, or do you have a different take for the main event? Yeah, this fight is won and lost on the scale for me. Uh, we've talked about Figueroa. Dave just talked about Figueroa's weight issues before. There's a reason why he had to fight Joe Benavidez twice, and it was because he missed on the scale once. And in both fights, he decimated Joe Benavidez, which sucks because I, I love Joey B. Dave loves Joey B. Everybody loves Joey B. Mm -hmm. uh, he's riding a four-fight winning streak. Uh, figure it's his first defense of the title. He's only lost once in his, his career, and that was to Juicy Formiga, who seemingly is getting released by the UFC in 2019. Alex Perez is the—he beat the only man to beat Figueroa. He beat Formiga by TKO at UFC 250. Uh, he did lose to Joe Benavidez by TKO in 2018, but he's 11-1 in the four years. Perez is a is a tough son bitch, but I, you can't. I'm not betting against the champion in his first title defense. You rarely see someone lose the title in their first defense. I'm gonna have to go with Figueroa here, I'm, unless unless he you know fakocks it up on the scale, which I don't think is gonna happen. I think we're gonna see Figueroa continue to hold on to the flyweight title after Saturday night. All right. Well, there you guys have it. If you guys want to get on that fight again via bet online, Figueredo is minus 270 and Alex Perez is plus 230. And that's all we have for this weekend's main card breakdown. If you guys want to check down more breakdowns and picks for this weekend's event, then just go to svrpicks.com forward slash UFC or just click the link in the description below. And also, if you aren't following the guys on Twitter, definitely give them a follow. You can follow Dave at dmanion underscore and you can follow Matt at mryanconsulting. And also, give SBR a follow on Twitter and on Instagram at SBR Sports Picks. Thank you guys so much for joining me today and dropping some knowledge. I wish you all the best of luck this weekend and I'll see you next week.